very much. It may seem like no one inside the Beltway is looking out for the taxpayer, but there are a few red ink crusaders, as we call them, who value the health of America and its citizens far more than they value getting reelected. We admit this is a minority we're talking about. Joining me now is a scoreboard hero who is at the forefront of eradicating government waste. We welcome Representative Jeff Flake. He is a Republican out of Arizona and a leader in earmark reform. And uh, Jeff, I got to tell you, when we began talking a couple of years ago, earmarks seem like an important subject, but they are really eclipsed by the trillions of dollars that we're now in debt. Well, that's right, David. It's, it's just astounding, the, the, the figures that we've just heard. Uh, when I came to Congress uh, first in 2001, uh, our entire uh, federal budget uh, was just a little more than our deficit is today. So uh, th these figures just uh, are unbelievable. Now, where do we go to start? I, I understand that, it, that there are very few people that, that don't just continue to vote along with our wallets. That is, they spend money without any regard to how much more in debt we are becoming. But is the movement to push back against debt gathering any momentum at all inside the Beltway? Well, if, if uh, last week's vote or two weeks ago uh, vote is any indication, no, uh, we voted a couple of weeks ago to ensure that uh, seniors who are making more than $175,000 a year are protected from any uh, Part B Medicare increase. It was a $3 billion item and there were only 19 votes against that. And so the notion that we're going to wring uh, $500 billion in savings out of uh, Medicare over the next 10 years, as is uh, the assumption under the Medicare bill, I'm sorry, the health care bill, is just crazy. Uh, we're not going to be able to do it uh, simply because very few people here on Capitol Hill uh, will vote against uh, this entitlement spending. I mean, you, you, you hit it right. I mean, earmarks, uh, they're a problem. They're a gateway to spending addiction. Uh, but the big money um, is in entitlements. And if we can't uh, get a hold of, uh, of this spending, we're simply not going to have, have an impact on the budget. And the question is whether a lot of those uh, stimulus spending uh, points have become entitlements. That is, we had this $700, $800 billion stimulus plan. Uh, it was supposed to be a one-time shot to get our economy moving, right. and, and yet a lot of these programs may become permanent, may become entitlements. Well, that's exactly right. There, there was very little that was stimulating about the stimulus spending. It was just a grab bag for a lot of the spending programs that many on Capitol Hill had wanted to see for, for decades. And so it will be built into the baseline and, uh, and we'll simply be spending this money in addition. It, it was said before that, uh, that you know, our, our outlays are far bigger than our receipts. This year, in percentage terms, we have a 16 percent decrease in revenue to the federal government and a 19 percent increase in outlays. And, and uh, in addition to the stimulus spending, uh, we're growing non-defense discretionary spending at a double-digit uh, pace. And so we're, we're simply adding to the baseline, and uh, there, there's just uh, very little uh, that you can say that we're doing um, to actually rein in spending at all right now. But, Jeff, the, the American people are not stupid. A lot of politicians think they're stupid. They play them for dumb, but they're not. We push back when, when the, you know, the president and others who are for health care reform, what they call health care reform, said we can create this new bureaucracy right. without spending a dime more. The American public said, we don't believe you. Right. They pushed back. They said right. it's going to add to our deficit. Can't we do that with other spending programs? Well, I, you're, you're exactly right, and, and uh, my guess is when uh, this, these CBO figures come out that, that say that this is going to be budget neutral over the next 10 years, people will look back at that vote two weeks ago and realize that if you can't tell Medicare recipients who are making $175,000 that you're, you're going to have to pay another $9 or $15 a month in uh, Part B premiums, then where are you going to cut exactly. in Medicare? And, exactly. and that's where the real money is. So, uh, you know, I don't think uh, our constituents out there are stupid at all. They've got it figured out, and, and I think that you're going to see a, a real awakening next year uh, when, when November comes around. Well, Jeff, what are the consequences for saying no? You know, Dave Ramsey's a great one for saying it's, it's a, a two-letter word that we don't use often enough in this country, just no. No, you can't have more spending. No, you can't have this. You can't have that. Uh, you, I know, were, were up for... Uh, 
uh, position on the Appropriations Committee uh, by the leadership of the Republican Party. They didn't put you in that position because they know you know how to say no. What are some of the other consequences of saying no inside the Beltway? Well, in, in the past here, uh, if you were to vote against something like that, that bill a couple of weeks ago, uh, you, you would hear from seniors. And uh, people know that seniors vote in disproportionate numbers, and they say we're, we're simply not going to cross them. But I, I think uh, this year it's going to be different, or this coming year, um, because people in August in particular were awakened to the, the fact that we simply can't sustain this level of spending in addition to adding massive new programs like this health care reform. And so I think, I hope that the old politics where politicians would simply rationally calculate if I vote for this bill, then I'll hear from fewer people than if I vote against it uh, is out the window. Uh, because uh, we, we simply are at a point when you're running a deficit that is uh, over 10 percent of GDP, uh, the rule of thumb has always been if you reach uh, 5 or 6 percent, it is virtually impossible to grow your economy. Right. And now we're at 10 percent. And uh, so I, I think we're seeing numbers we've just never seen before. It's, it's unsustainable, and, and you can't even print your way out of this with help from the Fed. Jeff, stay with us if you can. want to turn to a, a congresswoman who took the administration's inability to track stimulus funds. She took that into her own hands. Joining us now is Representative Kathy McMorris-Rogers. She's a Republican from Washington State and the creator of sunshine.gop.gov. You can look it up right now. Congresswoman, thanks for joining us. Uh, so do you know where the stimulus money is going? We're, we're working on it. Uh, I encourage everyone to visit the website and it is, it is our effort to bring some accountability to where these dollars are being spent. Just recently the Inspector General of the United States, uh, Devaney, who has been put in charge of the stimulus and has assured us that er there will be accountability, has estimated that at least 7% of those stimulus dollars will be wasted. That is $55 billion. It is a huge amount of money. It's, mm. it's more than most state budgets. And yet we, we seem to just accept that this money is lost. We spent $787 billion in stimulus money. Um, and what this website is trying to do, it is it's a one-stop shopping website where you can go and at your fingertips you can see where TARP money is being spent, stimulus, earmarks, authorizations. It, uh, was, uh, it took us a lot of time to pull it together, but it is our effort to bring some accountability to federal well, spending. And, and frankly, it looks like a work in progress. I mean, it's a huge, huge task, not only to see if money is being wasted, but to see if there's corruption going. I mean, there's the sort of thing that, that we saw with the Chris Dodd uh, uh, case over, over whether or not he got a sweetheart deal in his loan. I mean, that kind of stuff goes on pretty often inside the Beltway. And I imagine when you have a, a bill as big as stimulus, 700 billion, you, you want to watch out for that kind of stuff. Yes, uh, it, is, it is our attempt to bring some accountability, some transparency to how federal dollars are being spent. And I, I um, am proud to report that you can go to this website. Uh, it, it is thousands of pages that we have collected, trillions of dollars in spending that now is just a click away. And you can search by congressional district, you can search by a uh, member of Congress, by a dollar amount, by keywords, and actually see where those dollars are being spent. And I, and I think that this is so important in providing some accountability in this process. Uh, I, I applaud Representative Flake and the work that he's done he's on do, earmarks, done for example. Work, yeah. And, 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 and having the debate on how these spending decisions are made and, and how earmark money is, is, appropriate, is spent is very important. But we don't always have the time to go down on the House floor and actually have right. that debate. And this well, website... Let me, let me just go back to Jeff for a second. Jeff, like, you, you know, the, the question of whether there are any sweetheart deals, I, I saw an example of at least one of them. There are probably a lot more, but I only have so much time. In the TARP deal, where there was this bank in Barney Frank's district that he and some other people were lobbying for, I think uh, uh, there was a congresswoman from California who also had a family member on the bank board. They got special treatment in TARP that they shouldn't have gotten. I mean, are there deals, or sort of sweetheart deals like this that you look for in the stimulus bill? Oh, you bet. Um, the, the stimulus bill um, was put together so rapidly, and uh, 
and uh, pass so quickly that you know that there are going to be issues like this. And that's why uh, the, uh, the website that Kathy's talking about is so important. I mean, if we can shed some light on that and, and allow individuals to see what's going on, we, we stand a far better chance of, of knocking this spending out. It's still difficult, difficult knowing all of this. For example, uh, one of the, the spending items in the stimulus bill was a couple of million dollars uh, for this uh, airport in Pennsylvania that has, I think, just three or four flights a day all to Washington, right. uh, carrying just a few people. From um, Congressman and yet Murthy's we, district, uh, yeah. We had, correct, and uh, we had legislation to actually knock that out of the stimulus bill, and it failed by a wide margin uh, because uh, people, uh, you know, the log rolling takes effect, and people realize if they go after his spending, he might go after theirs. And so it, it's, it's very difficult, even given the transparency, to go after this. Well, Congresswoman, let me just ask you about one thing that's concerned us, this digital conversion thing. $600 million of the stimulus spending uh, was supposed to be on uh, informing people about digital con conversion uh, from analog, which I thought was taken care of when they sold off the bandwidths. Uh, did you find out anything there? Because there were some people with industry interests in some matters that may have gotten preferential treatment? Well, I, I don't know about that specifically, but I know that there are billions of dollars that we, we still don't know how they're going to be spent. Only about a quarter of the stimulus dollars have actually even been um, distributed. Right. And, and so the decisions are still being made, which is really what it is, is a, it's a slush fund for the administration to d spend in, in whatever way that it decides it wants to spend it. And as we see, politics gets the better of common sense when it comes to politics inside the Beltway. Uh, and I just hope that the common sense that you two bring to the legislative process really does begin to spread a little bit. But it's a very depressing situation inside the Beltway right now. We appreciate you both coming on. Thanks very much. Thank you, Herb. Thank you. Thanks, Tomorrow